Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another daily Marvel Snap video. So my last Zabu build was a little bit on the expensive side, it was a lot on the expensive side. And so I wanted to explore different ways that were a little bit more attainable for most players. And that is where we came across this version of the No Turn 6 For You deck. Now I've done a couple of different versions of No Turn 6 For You. Each of them lean very heavily on Absorbing Man. He is going to be the only Series 4 card in this list, and I feel like he is core in being able to make sure that this works how it's intended. You could try to do a Moon Girl instead, that way you can copy your Spider-Man. The main idea is that you're going to lock down a lane with Storm, you're going to lock down the other locations with your Spider-Man and Absorbing Man so you can make sure that they can't play anything on turn 6, and that allows you to easily maneuver your cards and your power to find a way to win. Now I feel like Absorbing Man, Spider-Man, and Doctor Doom are all core in helping elevate that power potential. Dr. Doom is great in reaching hard to reach locations, pushing a little bit of extra power into that storm lane. And then Spider-Man, of course, he is the enabler for this kind of archetype and locking down your opponent. Drax, on the other hand, really all you want is a powerful turn four drop. And so something like a Crossbones or a White Queen would do just fine. I just like the high roll potential of Drax if you hit that Honor Veil, or if maybe you do it in Kamartage and you hit the Honor Veil. But something like a Qu White Queen would be that good middle ground. You're going to get some information on the opponent, plus you're going to have a consistent six power to play as well. And out of my and out of my initial testing, out of ten games, I won six, so a 60% win rate, and I had a net cube gain of 15. So really, really strong showing for the first ten decks, especially with a control build forces the opponent to retreat most of the time. And so we're going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, first up we have Episteem, and the first location is the Raft. We will t probably play away from that location. We'll probably end up pushing like our Lizard and our Storm into a different location. Typically, the Raft will encourage players to play there early and heavy. And if we can lock that lane down on the end, or lock the other location down and they've already capped out this location, then we have a lot of control on what we can do on those last couple of turns, or on the last turn of the game at least. We're going to go ahead and storm the Nidavellir location. It is nice, and actually with if we end up going Zabu, we won't be able to lock down two lanes with the Spider-Man and Absorbing Man because it would reduce the cost of those cards down below the Crimson Cosmos. Now actually, this is kind of interesting. They used the Zabu, and if they're going with a heavy card reduction where they just want to play a lot of cards onto the board, they actually can't play anything into Crimson Cosmos. So just based off of that alone, I'm going to go ahead and snap here. We could play Zabu and then flood a few cards onto the board, but we're going to want to save our Spider-Man. If we play Zabu, we won't be able to play Spider-Man into the Crimson Cosmos. And what we're going to do is give up the Raft location. We're going to compete for the middle and the far right. I think those are going to be our two easiest lanes that we can win. And so they do use a Mr. Fantastic. Now, if they cap out the Raft location this turn, but don't play anything into the Crimson Cosmos, then we have the easy win. They will have a zero cost six power card, but they'll have no place to play it. And they do have the two power in the Crimson Cosmos, but they're not going to be able to push anything over there other than that two power. And we heavily won the flooded location already. So all we'll have to do is drop our Chavez and this is an easy game. All right, so they do play into the Raft location. They use a Killmonger, that's fine. We lock them out of the Crimson Cosmos and just like that, we have the win. They have six resources, a lot of reduced cost, four power cards, but they don't have any place to play them. And so we are going to take the two cubes. Let's jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Rin. And the first location is Westview. We do have our Storm, we have our Spider-Man, we have our Absorbing Man, and now we have Zabu. If we snapped now, do you think we'd scare them off? I'm going to wait a couple seconds, act like we're really thinking about things, then we'll snap. We're going to go ahead and lock in the Scorpion play in Necrotia. We will follow that up with Storm in that middle location. On turn four, we will drop our Zabu. That makes sure that they can't counter it with an Enchantress because by the time they drop Enchantress, we've already dropped both Spider-Man and Absorbing Man. And it is a lower tempo turn four drop, but that's okay. Um, I think I think by locking them out of the rest of the game, we don't necessarily care. And so we are going to now follow through. They do a Black Widow, which can be a little bit scary if they were going to be able to do a last turn play and they're not going to be able to. So we're going to drop the Storm and the Widow's Bite. They do use a Zabu of their own. So they're wanting to push a they're wanting to push maybe maybe Hawk or maybe Rock Slide, maybe Wong, Shuri, Rock Slide. All of those really big resources, they're going to want to push here. 
but they're not going to be able to. We're going to go ahead and do Zabu into the flooded lane. We're going to do Iceman into the Baxter building. And then next turn, we'll be able to do Spider-Man and Absorbing Man. I don't know if this is enough to win the flooded location, but by locking them out of the turn six play, we should be able to very reliably figure out a way to win. Now they do use Daredevil, so they'll be able to see our turn five play coming in before it comes in. We do have initiative here, so even if they use something like an arrow or anything to try to stop this Spider-Man on reveal, it's not going to happen. And so they are, I think, probably wanting their really big high roll with the Wong, with the Hawk, but that is okay. We're going to lock down both the Spider-Man and the Fisk Tower location, and they won't be able to do a last turn play. And then we did draw into Doctor Doom, which is probably the perfect draw we could have asked for. Um, just all of these resources and having all of these in hand is such a high roll. And it's going to be really hard. If you draw into these pieces, it's going to be really hard for the opponent to really react. Because you lock them down so quickly that before they really even know what's happening, uh, they can't play. So they do push two cards into the flooded location. Let's see what they are. They're not going to be able to play on the final turn. But maybe if they have enough power in the Baxter building lane, they'll be able to push enough into the flooded lane as the result. No, they're not going to be able to. But right now, it temporarily does swing the Baxter building location. We're not able to play over there, but we do still have the win in the flooded lane. All we have to do is push power in this tower, and we're actually going to be able to push a little bit more power over there. And we'll be able to win it by even more. We'll be able to swing the flooded lane further in our favor. And I... If they stick this one out, I, I was going to say they're just donating cubes at that point. And so we did have the guaranteed win condition there. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have Strong Breeze. And I like Mirror Dimension. Anytime I have a Storm list, I like Mirror Dimension because it can potentially cause you to have two lane lockdowns. And then all we're going to need is Spider-Man. And dropping Spider-Man into Nexus, it feels really good if we can draw into our Spider-Man. If we don't, then on turn three, we're absolutely going to storm that Nexus location. And we probably will anyways, just to make sure that Mirror Dimension does not turn into it. And so depending on this last location, it's Shuri's Lab, which I don't necessarily care for either. I definitely think that from what we've seen, the Bast, the Psylocke, we're expecting a Mr. Negative here. A Mr. Negative, Bast, Silver Surfer list typically doesn't do great into Shuri's Lab, especially if we can lock it down. And so we're going to go ahead and storm the Nexus location. What we're hoping for is that Mirror Dimension copies the Storm location. We'll be able to play into there two more turns, but that is going to be it. And then all we need is the Spider-Man. And so it looks like this is the last turn that you can play there, but it's absolutely not true. Um, this is the last turn we can play here, but the true last turn for this one is next turn. I'm, I'm not sure if that's intended with Mirror Dimension. It's because it's on turn four that it turns into it, and so then the effect doesn't take effect until next turn. It's a really weird interaction, but they did go ahead and play a card into that far left flooded location. So the Spider-Man is not what we're going to draw into, unfortunately. So I'm going to try to angle to not have initiative going into this last turn. That way, if they do any kind of really big plays here, I guess if they do a Iron Man that's been inverted here, that we'd be able to take it out with our Shang-Chi. Otherwise, we don't have a great play line on it. Um, but we are going to just play the Jessica Jones into the flooded lane. We're obviously going to lose that one, but we don't want initiative going into this last turn. That way, whatever big powerful plays they do, we're going to try to destroy their power in the Shuri's lab location. And so Drax should trigger here. He'll get double powered. So it will actually be 16 power. And then the Shang-Chi will be six. I'm not confident enough to snap because most of the time a negative bast list doesn't run things that get above nine even after being doubled a lot of times it's a it's a cap of three um maybe wolfsbane here could get it if they play the wolfsbane it'll be over Ooh, and then the it is the inverted iron man which is beautiful unless they have some way to protect it um the mystique is pretty decent as well um but it's gonna have zero power so we're gonna be able to take out the 10 power iron man that's gonna leave them with nine which is gonna be 18 uh, because it's doubled and then we do have the Drax which will trigger and will actually beat them in the Shuri's lab location what a awful play for them that is really unfortunate that they had the inverted Iron Man if it was just regular Iron Man and then inverted Mystique the roles would have been reversed and we wouldn't have been able to stop that sometimes it takes luck Spider-Man was hanging out at the bottom of our deck he probably had better things to do let's hope that we draw him next turn let's go ahead and jump over into the next game all right, so next up we have Misty, and this is actually the 
third game in a row that we've played against Misty. The first one, it was not it, it was not exciting. It was a very early we snapped very early to some tempo cards that we got and they ended up retreating. The second one, they ended up out pacing us just a little bit. We weren't quite able to get the double lockdown. We didn't draw into both of the resources we needed. And so then we just folded after that. And so we are going to go with the storm into the Nexus location. We don't want that one to remain. And then after that, if we can lock down the Onslaught Citadel location with the Spider-Man, I think we can find a way to win this game. So they do use the Cosmo. They could be angling to play maybe a Maximus here. And so that would end up being a total of nine power with our Dr. Doom. We'll be able to push that nine power onto the board. We're going to go Zabu. That's going to make all of our one cost cards cost only one. We're going to go ahead and snap. We're going to tempo snap. We and the, that's how the first game ended. Um, I've, pr I've probably played over three times the amount of games I normally do with a deck, and we've had a pretty good win rate. It's just a lot of them are games like this that don't really feel worthwhile to showcase. I am going to showcase this one, but let's jump over into the next one, see if we can get a bit better of a game that we get to develop it a little bit more so I can actually showcase the deck and what it can do rather than just early retreats. All right, next up we have Bok Choy. And the first location is Sanctum Sanctorum, which we have our Doctor Doom, which is really, really good for us. All we have to do is really focus on locking down and winning one other lane, and most likely we'll be able to win at the Sanctum Sanctorum location. And then the Miniaturized Lab is going to lock down on turns 3, 4, and 5, and so we're going to have a really restrictive space of play. We're only going to be able to play into this far right lane up until the last turn of the game. And this location is Gamma Lab. I actually think we might go with a Storm. We can go with a storm into a Jessica Jones. I, um, it might not beat us. Oh, wow. They use a zero on their sunspot and they zero out his ability thinking it was going to turn into a Hulk. And then we just get the better of them. Oh, my gosh. So we're going to go ahead and do Jessica Jones. That's going to give us plus eight power. We're both going to have to skip on turn five. The Enchantress is OK. We don't have any strong ongoing abilities. Now it's going to come down to us winning the miniaturized lab location. I'm going to go ahead and snap and hope that they don't put us on having the Doctor Doom. The Doctor Doom will help us win Sanctum Sanctorum. We'll push more power over into the flooded lane, and they do let us go through with the snap. And so let's go ahead and play our Doctor Doom. I think we should be able to win here. They did skip. They could do an Infinite. They could be... Oh, no, the Arnim Zola is going to destroy the Lizard. It's going to push it to the left and into the far right, but we, at that point, tie the far left and we win the far right because of the Jessica Jones and the Arnim Zola is not even enough to make it through. And they stayed because they thought the Arnim Zola was enough to push it over there. And so we get a rare four cube victory with this deck. With that one, I am going to go ahead and end the video here. With the list, I played a total of 34 games. I had a 53% win rate and just, and just under two ranks. So I had 19 cubes gained and a couple of those were big blunders on my part. I lost a couple of eight cube games that I was just too stubborn to retreat, but otherwise the deck list holds up pretty well. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. What combos are you seeing with Zabu that you like or that you think are really strong? Let me know and I'll try them out. I also want to start testing out some counter plays to Zabu matches, which we haven't seen a lot of Zabu yet, or I haven't seen a lot of Zabu, but finding a way to naturally tech in cards like Sandman. But I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave it a like and a comment down below. And as always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.